Last week, a fellow cruiser was sort of lost at sea. It was a long week, and after many cruisers shared video calls and phone calls and emails were flying around between all of us, we had all started to assume that we may have actually lost him somewhere in the Gulf Stream. The Coast Guard executed a multi-day search by air and sea, and luckily, he was eventually found safe after spending several days beating into seas in terrible conditions by himself. Now, this is a man who lives aboard, has sailed a zillion miles. Um, I've sailed behind, beside him for many miles, shared many a rum drink with him, and I even responded to a Mayday call, that's how I met him, a long time ago when he lost all navigation on his way to Nassau. This week's episode was going to be about a boat I really love, the Catalina 36, but the episode sort of grew into a bigger question. What exactly is a blue water sailboat? And while I would definitely consider my friend's boat to be very blue water capable, it's a bubba, there are a range of boats just on the edge of blue water that we should talk about. So on this week's episode of Everything You Need to Know, would you blue water this boat? So what exactly is a blue water sailboat? There's a lot of definitions and arguments all over the internet providing a wealth of different answers to that question, but basically it boils down to this for me. Would you cross the Atlantic on it? Now some boats, take Delos for example, the Amel, is purpose built to cross oceans. Delos has proven that over and over and over again in every condition imaginable. The reason she is considered by basically everyone to be a proper blue water boat is like a whole mix of different things. Blue water starts with construction, and I can speak to this personally. For one example, think about the fiberglass tabbing that connects the structural bulkheads to the hull. Every boat has some sort of system to do this to reinforce the integrity and twisting motion of the hull in big seas. My boat, for example, Hughes 35, was built for lake sailing and light coastal cruising and racing. However, the ocean moves differently than the lakes, and the torsion and twist applied to the hull is significantly more on the ocean. That's why proper blue water boats are laid up heavier. They use significantly better tabbing and chain plate attachments. Also, is the boat equipped to cross the Atlantic? Blue water means sometimes weeks on your own with no help, no boat yards, no haulouts. Does she carry enough spares and tools that you'll be capable of fixing just about anything hundreds of nautical miles from any help. Equipment plays a role as well. How well equipped is the boat? Does it have a stay sail? Does it have running backstays? A rig with the ability to heave to in 30 knots of wind and 20 foot seas? You need a solid whisker pole and of course, some sort of self-steering mechanism. Which sort of brings me to my point. What about the large amount of us, like myself, that aren't necessarily looking to cross an ocean? We just want to bounce around the Caribbean and live our best lives. Do we need some full keel catch overbuilt monster with sea bursts and life rafts? There's a whole market of boats that fall just short of what we would consider blue water, but if properly equipped, they certainly are much more capable than just lake sailing and PHRF racing. Boats like mine, the Hughes 35, or the star of today's episode, the Catalina 36. Boats that I know of examples of that have actually crossed the Atlantic even though I wouldn't do it personally. The Catalina 36 is the poster boy for exactly what I'm talking about. I ran with one from Annapolis to the southern tip of the Exumas in the Bahamas, and it did remarkably well. They can be had cheap, and if they're in good repair, you can equip them for just about anything short of a full crossing. Now, Frank Butler helped design the 36, and you may remember him from our Catalina episode, which uh, you can see right here if you'd like to. He founded Catalina Yachts, which is one of the most successful sailboat manufacturers in the world still to this day. They started building the 36 in 1982, and that run went all the way to 2005. With shy of about 3,000 of the 36 built, it's one of the most popular 30-footers ever made, so you've likely seen them around. And while they were intended to be sort of a great weekend cruiser, maybe at the high end of weekend cruisers, they fall right into the right weight class to be a great little Caribbean island hopper at almost 15,000 pounds. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to keep this channel improving. Thank you all for making this all possible. So to the point of the episode, would you blue water this boat? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm interested to hear it. 
Here's what I think. While I wouldn't cross an ocean on a Catalina 36, I would definitely hit some blue water in the Caribbean. And here's why. First of all, I know people who have. My friends Davey and Erica over on Barefoot 2, Barefoot Sail and Dive is their YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. You should check them out. It's awesome. I mentioned weight at some 15,000 pounds, which is actually a full 1,000 to 2,000 pounds heavier than Lady K. And we were cruising together. So there's a big difference, which actually means a lot when you need to punch through headwinds and seas. The heavier the boat, the more comfortable you're going to be most of the time. There was a time when the two of us were sailing off Long Island for the Turks, when the Catalina made it work, and Lady K just couldn't do it. Less weight. Mind you, that was just after nearly sinking weeks earlier, and I sort of lacked the courage to push the boat as hard as she needed to be pushed on that passage, so I turned back. And while our boats are so similar, Lady K has a conventional quarter berth on the starboard side, while the Catalina gets an actual aft cabin. That's right, an aft cabin on a 36-foot boat from the 80s. It's just amazing, and it would have saved me from having to convert my dinette area into a full-on master. Another point I like about Catalina is her relatively large fresh water tank. For a mid-30-footer, it has 62 gallons from the factory. Lady K only natively carried 30 gallons. I had to retrofit another 40 gallons to be carried just above the keel, which was sort of a big pain. There is one place where Lady K won out, and that was in keel depth of just five feet, while the Catalina needed six feet of water. It may not sound like much of an issue normally, but when you're in the Bahamas or traveling on the ICW, it does make a world of difference. On many, many occasions, I was able to sneak into safer anchorages, albeit sometimes scraping the bottom, but you know, that happens, while the Catalina had to seek deeper accommodations for the night, or in many cases on the ICW, they would have to go the long way around while well, I could take shortcuts. And those shortcuts helped. The Catalina had a much better speed through the water because she's not an IOR boat. And while I love my IOR hull, she sails amazing in a good blow. She just doesn't make sense for long passages with no wind because she's so slow when she's standing upright. An IOR boat needs to have a good heel to perform to her actual factory performance, while the Catalina will run over six knots in just about anything. If you're in the market for a mid-30 footer, you should really look at the Catalina 36, especially the Mark II. They started making that in 1994 and made some changes. The hull's the same, but they made changes to the design to include a much bigger cockpit. There's different port lights and things like that, and even a walk-through transom on a 36 footer from the 90s. Now, I should reiterate, while I would not cross an ocean on either of these boats, no matter how well equipped they are, they are both very capable of making it from Canada to Florida or Florida to Grenada in relative comfort, a lot cheaper than the newer boats most people consider. That's it for this week, guys. Can't wait to hear what you think in the comments. And if you want to see an episode on your boat, leave it down below. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for me if you like this episode and subscribe if you want to see more of everything you need to know.